So yeah, I'm Zach Rothmer, which uh, Brett started with, and um, I decided to hike the trail for many different reasons. Uh, I had an older brother who hiked it when he was in high school. He was a senior in 2007. And I have to say, he was a very large influence on me to choose to do the trail initially, or give me the idea to do it. Um, unfortunately, uh, Greg died in a car accident. Um, so he was definitely there uh, with me. He hiked it the other way. I ended up hiking it from south to north, um, which is the recommended way to do it because it starts fairly easy and it moves its way to a more mountainous, you know, Camel's Hump, Mansfield, bigger mountains are in the north. He hiked it the other way, but um, he was definitely an influence. And I also, as, I don't know, I am a strange high school student. I don't like gym class. <laughs> and <laughs> I had hoped, actually, I'll, I have a nerd joke later on, but we'll, we'll see if we get there. Um, <laughs> I had hoped that I could get a, the, my final gym credit from hiking this trail, and my school, Craftsbury, obliged. So that was a plus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're smart too, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, just to give you a brief uh, idea of the trail, it's about 273 miles. Uh, it's got 70-ish campsites. Um, I think there are 50, 50 of those campsites are shelters that are built by the uh, Green Mountain Club. Um, it is also the oldest long distance trail in the United States. It was the inspiration for the Appalachian Trail. And for those who don't know, the Appalachian Trail stretches from Georgia to Mount Katahdin in Maine, which is like 2,700 miles. Um, Brett asked me if I wanted to do that um, next, because, you know, 273 to 2,700 is the natural progression. <laughs> And maybe, <laughs> we'll see. I could probably stomach about two weeks at a time, which is about the time it took me to hike the long trail, but um, I will never hike alone again. Uh, <laughs> but let's just get into this. So um, the, as I was telling Molly backstage, this uh, presentation was actually originally made for the school presentation I gave. So it's primarily pictures, because pictures are better than writing and no one wants to read. But we will go over briefly uh, some equipment and supplies I went over, then the picture compilation, as well as a little bit of advice that I have if anyone wants to uh, get out there and hike. Um, so there are two slides of equipment that I brought in this bag over here. Um, this was the most expensive piece of equipment that I purchased for this, or my parents purchased for this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it is well worth it. I love that bag. It was extraordinarily comfortable. Um, the only downside is the straps still smell like body odor. <laughs> but that's to be expected when you're hiking for 16 days. Um, just kind of continuing on. I, you probably all have hiked before. It's not much. The biggest thing is food, um, of which I pretty much ate oatmeal for breakfast. Um, I thought of this thing, uh, after reading someone's blog on it, um, they took a bag, a Ziploc bag, put oatmeal in it, dry oatmeal, and mixed in brown sugar. So then every morning, you would just heat up water. I think I have my, uh, my I feel like Santa Claus, got my bag of goodies. <laughs> this, oh no. <laughs> This was my stove. This is called a jet boil. Um, a gas thing hooks into the bottom and it just boils water and you can eat directly out of it. I found this to be the most useful. It's also extraordinarily light. It's lighter than my water bottle by a long shot. Um, but in the morning I just boil water, put the oatmeal in and boom. Um, lunches were a little bit more complicated. I tried three different types of lunches. I tried uh, peanut butter, honey and bagels. Turns out bagels are very large and take up a lot of space in the bag. So I did that once and then I texted my mom who thankfully uh, hiked periodically in to me to deliver my food, which was a blessing. Um, apple and hummus in a wrap turned out to be the most, um, the easiest as well as the most delectable. It was also very filling. It sounds weird, 
but it's really good. Um, Kielbasa crackers and cheese was good. It wasn't as filling. Um, I had it more in the north when I needed a lighter pack for the bigger mountains. Um, let's see. This was my itinerary. Um, I was able to do it in 16 days. Originally, the plan was for 26 days because that is the average time it takes for someone to hike the trail is 26 days. Um, so this is a revised edition. It originally was much longer. Um, and I planned out stops where my mother would hike in and bring me food. Uh, unfortunately, we had to change most of those because I was moving much, much faster than I originally anticipated. Um, here are the miles that I did per day. Uh, the longest was 23 miles down here, which is a lot. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Let's move on. So this was the first day, and you'll notice a weird facial hair progression throughout the pictures, <laughs> but... Um, the first day, I was very excited. Um, I had that, it's almost when you get a new car. You're just going for it, and then you probably crash because you're so excited. That was me on the first day, and you know, I'm going along. I remember uh, singing some songs, because, you know, what else are you going to do when no one's there? Um, I recited, bless you, some poetry, and uh, it was pretty good the first day. Um, However, I remember the first day I, uh, I mistook two pawns. I was looking at the map, which I don't have. It has survived, though. The map surprisingly survived. It was the best $12 investment anyone could make. Sold by the Green Mountain Club. Highly recommend it. Um, but I mistook two pawns for one on the map, which turned out to be uh, irritating as well as kind of discouraging because it turned out I was much farther behind than I thought I was. Um, the first night was the only night that I slept in a tent. In a tent. Um, I, wish, I really wish I had not brought the tent um, because the tent was about 10 pounds and that would have been... Uh, I could have brought more food <laughs> if I had, didn't have the tent, I'll be honest. Um, so that first night, and also strangely that first night, uh, there every, I got to this shelter it was not getting dark. Let's see if I wrote down the time. It was approximately. I didn't write down the time. It was probably around 5 o'clock, 5 or 6 o'clock. And uh, everyone was camping around the shelter. There was, that was by far the most people at any shelter uh, was the first night. There were maybe 25 or 30 people just kind of scattered around. Um, which I realized in the morning, no one slept in the shelter. Everyone was just around in tents, so naturally I pitched my tent and slept around as well. Um, let's see, anything happen exciting the second day? I don't know. Oh, this was one of the pawns. This was actually, this was the pond that I kept mistaking, but it was really pretty area. Uh, I liked the, the swampy area. I ended up not filtering water here. I had a water filter called the Sawyer Squeeze. And how it works is you have a bladder. You fill the bladder. The bladder screws onto the Sawyer Squeeze and you squeeze it into your water bottle. Turns out a bladder is really hard to um, put water in, in stagnant water. So I could only fill the bladder at streams, which became more scarce as it got hotter. I don't know if any of you remember last year, but around the time that I was hiking Mansfield was the 96 degree day. Oh, wow. So that was a blast. But um, at, at the last three days, I, I brought two water bottles and I sacrificed one to dirty water so I could just screw the water bottle onto the Sawyer squeeze and I threw the bladder away. Not literally, but I put it at the bottom of the bag. Um, where was this? This was Stratton Mountain, looking back. Um, this is a panorama. I think I have quite a few different panoramas, but, um, excuse me, this is not Stratton. This is a mountain before Stratton. One thing that surprised me about the views, actually, was the fact that I'm used to hiking in the White Mountains or in um, Acadia Park in Maine. So I'm used to hiking for an hour or so, and you get a beautiful view. The long trail is not that. Uh, <laughs> 
It took three days before I got to a mountain, which was Stratton, and I didn't get a view um, any, <laughs> any, until then. But um, the few pictures I did take were views. <laughs> um, oh, this was cool. So this was, um, I was on a bunk bed in the shelter, and I don't know if you can see this, but there's baby birds, like right here, uh, which woke me up at 5.30 in the morning. Um, <laughs> But it was cool to wake up and just have this little nature right next to you, right? Um, so this picture is to remind me, this was, someone just built all these cairns on the top of this mountain. Um, oh, and this was the top. There's no view, just trees <laughs> and this. Um, but it was at this, around this point that I had met up with a man named Sliced Beats. So it was day, let's see. I think it was day five-ish. Nope, day four. Day four, I was hiking along, and this 60-year-old guy with a long white beard goes rocketing by me. It was extraordinarily embarrassing. It was a super quick, hi, hey. Um, but he ended up, I guess he went off the trail, so I caught up to him again the next day. And we hiked to a shelter uh, and then ended up spending the night there and we talked a lot and it was great to have uh, someone to talk to because uh, I don't know if you've ever um, tried to isolate yourself for multiple days on end but uh, I'm an introvert and this was too much so <laughs> <laughs> I like to say that this guy taught me how to hike fast um, he was hiking the Appalachian Trail so he had four months on me of hiking. But um, he told me the story about how he had learned how to hike fast from another gentleman who was 25. And I don't remember his name, but he was hiking um, all the long distance trails in North America. So there's one in California, it's called like the Pacific, Crest Trail, maybe? Is that it? He'd hiked that, he'd hiked like all these other trails, and he had done the Appalachian Trail um, when Sliced Beats was doing it, and he had passed him by a long shot as Sliced Beats passed me. But um, that mentality of hiking fast, he gave to me, um, and I really am thankful for that. I also joked with him, I was like, huh, wouldn't it be funny if I could finish the trail in uh, 16 days at age 16? <laughs> And he said, well, um, you know, maybe you could do it. Just put your mind to it and go for it. He ended up leaving me uh, the next day at lunch because I could not keep up. <laughs> but <laughs> the one day I got to stay in civilization was um, when it passed, the trail passed over, oh crud, what's this place called? Hmm, Killington, there we go. The ski area. This is one of the slopes in Killington looking directly north. I remember looking at this and going, I have to hike all those. <laughs> um, down here is the road. And I actually took the old long trail. The old long trail went across the road and someone had put an inn right there, conveniently called the Inn at Long Trail, yep. um, which I did spend the night at and they gave me a significant discount because I was a hiker, which was nice. Um, I also met an, a lot of other hikers there, including a gentleman named Sandals, who was hiking the Appalachian Trail in Sandals. I don't know, my feet were terrible by the end. I do have a picture in here and a little warning for those who might be a little squeamish, because wet feet after seven plus days of hiking look really bad. Um, let's see. Oh, so this was a rainy day. Um, I woke up. You can kind of see the misty rain. Um, I ended up hiking three days in the rain, which is awful. <laughs> um, but this was a little lake outside of Skyline Lodge. And I remember meeting a woman here. Um, this was the first day of rain. I woke up from the Inn at Long Trail. I was excited because that's where the Appalachian Trail splits with the Long Trail. So I was on my own and there is a slight difference between the maintenance of the long trail to the long trail Appalachian Trail overlapping. Um, the southern half where the Appalachian Trail overlaps is a little bit more maintained because more people use it. It's 
that simple. But um, I remember that day I woke up and it started to rain as I was hiking. And I stopped for lunch at this shelter um, where I saw this lady. It was about 11.30. She hadn't moved. She was hiking the long trail. And um, we talked a little while. I had like an hour long lunch, which was rare. I normally sat for like 15 minutes or less because I wanted to get the darn trail done. But um, I ended up seeing her again this night. And I remember we talked for a little while. Uh, she scared me initially because this, is, this was a four-sided shelter. Most of them were just three-sided lean-tos. This one had a door in it and a bunch of bunk beds that had been built. But I remember she scared me because I heard a bunch of moving in the brush outside and it was like dark. Turned out to be a person. Um, <laughs> this is where the nerd joke comes in. Um, she didn't know who Elon Musk was, which maybe some of you don't, which is disappointing to me. <laughs> but she didn't know and I was sad. <laughs> um, if you don't know who he is, Google him. He's cool. Um, this is an area about as long as I am laying down of just poop. Um, turns out a lot of deer use this trail. <laughs> so someone's uh, enjoying it, I guess. I passed about three areas this big in the same day that was just poop. This may have been a tenting site originally. Not anymore. Um, I don't remember which mountain this was. But it's a mountain, and it was a view that I hadn't had for a while, so that was cool. Um, I don't remember where this was. Hmm. Let's see. What is next? A lag. Oh, this was, okay, so this was a really cool day. Um, it drizzled in the morning, but then it was fine. This is a rain cloud. It's raining right here and not anywhere over here. Um, it was really cool. I don't know if I put the picture in. We'll see in a second. But there was a rainbow that was like over here. Um, so that was a really cool, I did. There you go. So there's the rainbow. Um, it was beautiful. This must have been a ski area. Uh, I don't remember which one, but it must have been. <laughs> but yeah, this was very cool to see the, the rain in one area and not in the other. Nature's pretty cool. Sometimes. Um, again, with a random picture of a mountain. Uh, probably another view. You know what this might be? I think this might be going down into Winooski. Um, they're not Winooski, to Bolton, where the Bolton Mountain starts. I, it, the trail crosses the Winooski River, and I met up with my aunt that day, uh, which was, again, amazing, because, you know, people, which I didn't get to see that often. And I had a banana which was delicious. Um, but uh, I met up with her and we swam with my seven, then seven-year-old cousin. Um, and uh, it was good. I remember wringing my shirt out again, which I have so lovely brought for you people. Um, I took this shirt and I wrung this shirt out in the water and I've never been so grossed out in my life. Um, you can come up later and see this, but it is nasty and there's a story behind why it's actually full of holes, which I get to at the end. Um, but I was severely grossed out. I'm normally a fairly clean person and that was gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, where was this? Again, maybe looking the other way. I think these two pictures are related. And then you just turn, maybe, potentially. Oh, yeah, this is a fun one. So my mom wanted me to send pictures when I got to the top of Mansfield, Camel's Hump, etc. Um, I was getting up around 6, 6.30. It would be hiking by 7-ish every day. So it's foggy in the morning. So I got to the top of Camel's Hump where I ha actually had signal, which was a plus. And my mom said, uh, send me a picture when you get to the top. So I sent her this picture. <laughs> um, yeah, that was lovely. Same thing at the top of Jay Peak. I got there. It was just this. Actually, Jay Peak was much windier than Camel's Hump. But, um... Oh, here are my feet. Oh, look at this. The corpse feet right here. Um, this was the biggest blister by far. Um, nope, that one was pretty big too. That one I had a scar for until a few months ago. Um, or from, rather. But, uh, yeah, 
And there was nothing I could have done about this. Uh, some people I've told my story to and they've been like, well, you should have worn hiking boots. Um, hiking boots still get wet in the rain. Uh, I was rec it was recommended to me that I wear um, running shoes because I'm a runner. Um, or trail running shoes. I, it's like a cross between a running shoe and a hiking boot. Um, so it's a stiff shoe, which I did not bring. But they smell terrible, so you probably wouldn't want to see them anyway. Uh, but yeah, those supposedly they were quick dry. They were definitely not quick dry. <laughs> um, when I got home, I couldn't walk up the stairs, which was weird because I just climbed multiple mountains that day. <laughs> some sort of uh, mental thing of uh, a mental sigh, I guess, when you get home. You just, you know, don't have to do, you don't have to hike anymore, you're done. Um, let's see. Nope, I was wrong. Remember how I said that was Winooski? This was Winooski. That's Bolton Mountain over here. Uh, and here's the road, or the river, rather, and the road, I guess. But um, there was this little area right here. I remember stopping, and there was a couple that was there. Definitely not a hiking couple, you could tell. They were very, it was hot. They were both very sweaty and definitely not dressed to be hiking. Um, there's a ledge here and I can't remember what it's called. It's got a name, it's on the map, um, but it overlooks uh, the, like, the Bolton Mountain and then the valley right here. And I remember hearing them because I'm a creep and I was eavesdropping. Uh, <laughs> what else are you gonna do, right? Uh, they were talking about how um, they, she, I guess, wanted to go watch a movie. And he's like, no, we're going to hike up and then go for a swim. I guess that's what they did, because I saw them up here. But um, yeah, I remember seeing this mountain and going, again, oh, Jesus, because Bolton is big. Um, <laughs> I hope I have a picture in here. There's a shelter I still want to go up to at some point. Uh, it's called Puffer Shelter. It's on the, it's on one of the sides of Bolton Mountain. <laughs> And it overlooks um, this valley. It must be like right here-ish. Um, and it overlooks this whole valley. Um, and the sun rises directly in front of the shelter. Uh, and it would be a beautiful place to go to. Um, if anyone wants to go there, it's about... Uh, if you go long but slowly getting steeper, it's about 10 miles. If you go kind of straight up the other side, it's about 5. So, um, this is the view from the shelter, looking back. Um, absolutely beautiful. Uh, let's see, what other pictures do I have here? Okay, so this was the beginning of Mansfield. Uh, I hiked Mansfield at about 7.30 at night. I had been hiking all day, and as I said, it was about 96 degrees that day. And as I got to different places, I'd send my family pictures. So this was one picture that I sent to my aunts, my dad, my mom, everyone. Um, and another thing about Mansfield, there was a thunderstorm that was brewing uh, to the, let's see, west. And you could see the clouds slowly moving in and hear the thunder. And it was an extraordinarily humbling moment just this massive cloud bank rolling towards you. Um, I remember when I got to the top of Mansfield, I saw, oh, there's a picture from the top. I saw this one guy uh, who had run up the mountain. He just had like a, um, like a belt with water, that was it. Uh, and I remember seeing him, I've got my huge bag. Uh, he's, you know, panting. I'm panting. I'm like, I wish I could be you. Just, you know, a day run up Mansfield as one does on the weekend. Um, <laughs> but this was the view. Uh, I think this is, well, it's looking towards that little doodle. But um, let's see if I have another one. I hope I do. Well, that's the top. So I can prove that I, I got there. Um, this is looking back towards the ski area which I've been to, I love snow, it's very fun. But um, it was really weird seeing it from this perspective because this is the highest point to, for a long ways. Um, so you could see everywhere, including the end of the trail, which was kind of fun. Um, 
another view from the top of Mansfield. Uh, here's the cloud rolling in. Uh, the sun was coming through, spreading these like god rays, right, which was amazing. But um, it was ominous. It looks a lot less ominous now, but it was very ominous then. Again, okay, so this was fun. This might be hard to see, but there's a blaze about here. And then there's another blaze right here. And I remember seeing this, and it, the perspective looked exactly like this. It looks like you're going to drop right off the edge right here. And I remember at this point, I was so tired and sore, and I had hiked in the rain, and I wasn't that happy. And I remember thinking, you know, if the trail dropped me off the edge, I really wouldn't be surprised at this point. Um, it ended up going like over this, over that, down, and then up over there. This was the sunset from Taft Lodge, which is on top of Mansfield, kind of going down. Um, that night, uh, and one night before, I hadn't realized this, but some trails cost, or some uh, shelters cost money, which I didn't know, so I didn't bring my wallet. Um, and the first one was Montclair Glen Lodge, which was right before Camel's Hump. And I remember I had seen a father and son hiking earlier that day. And um, we kind of did a crisscross where I passed them, they passed me, I passed them. Um, we eventually got to that shelter and uh, he offered to pay for me, which was amazing. I mean, it was like five bucks, but still hikers are really nice people. And again, a father and a daughter were hiking here. He w must have been 65 maybe. Um, and she, he had hiked the long trail when he was her age, so he was taking her back to do it, which was kind of cool. And he also offered to pay for me and did it, which was amazing. Um, also, funny side note, on the, when I got to Montclair Glen Lodge, there was a whole bunch of French people there. I guess a lot of Quebec people think it's fun to just come down and hike for a few days. They carried a cooler <laughs> through the woods. <laughs> with beer. <laughs> I can't drink because I'm 17, but they definitely offered it to me. Because <laughs> they're French, you know, ho-ho. Um, <laughs> oh, here. I don't remember where this was, but it must have been after the Mansfield. Also, a side note again. Um, I had two falls on this trail because I know someone's going to ask that. I only fell twice. The first time was a relatively soft landing on pine needles. It was just kind of a slip and boof. Um, the second time was coming down Camel's Hump, where I slid 10-ish feet just down rock, which was not fun. Um, I was fine, a little scraped, uh, very unhappy, but... Um, it's bound to happen. Let's see. Again, couldn't tell you where this is, but it's here. It must have been after. I don't actually think this was after Mansfield, because that's Mansfield, isn't it? Right here. Um, yeah. We'll leave that to some of you to puzzle out where these pictures are from. <laughs> um, OK. So this was a picture from the last night. These are poos. These are not holes. Um, it was the last night. And I left my shirt out uh, because it was very sweaty and nasty, and I hoped it would dry a little bit. Um, and I was visited by little friends in the night who ate my shirt and my shorts and um, kind of generally pooed over my gear, <laughs> which <laughs> I didn't notice when I left this open. Um, so I went about, I didn't see this in the morning initially, I went about my business doing, um, getting breakfast, so... <laughs> Good thing you didn't have raisins in that oatmeal. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I didn't notice, so... <laughs> I, <laughs> you get into this mindset, um, when you're put into a situation like this, and I don't want to call it a survival situation because I wasn't forced into it, I forced myself into it. Um, but your mind brings you to a very animalistic state of just go, water, food, sleep. And 
yes, I was distracted by my own thinking, but being alone for 16 days is ridiculously um, almost oppressive. Uh, I grew a huge respect for nature during this trail, also for modern amenities, um, <laughs> but you can't help but um, look at nature and just kind of go, wow, when you do something like this, uh, as well as look at the modern world and go, wow. Uh, we're so far beyond just like that animalistic mindset. It's really interesting to get back into it and just kind of experience it. Um, this was the final post. I remember I came around the corner and I'd been thinking of, you think of things while you're on the trail uh, that you want to do when you get off. And I had this, I like cooking, so I had this idea in my head that I wanted to make homemade pancakes, I wanted to make homemade bread, and I wanted to make a beef stew. And that's what I wanted really badly. Um, I also had this mindset of uh, I wanted to turn the corner and grab a piece of chocolate and kind of split it. Um, I was thinking uh, almost Christian style, like, you know, finish it off. Um, which I did end up doing, unbeknownst to the people that were with me. Um, actually, that reminds me. Uh, the second to last day, I was supposed to meet up with my other aunt, um, my mother's older sister, and her dog. We were supposed to meet, and I figured, hey, I've been doing you know, 15 to 20 miles a day. She could probably do about 12. So I budgeted in at the end, texting her, okay, you can meet me here, and then we have um, two days of just 12 miles. And she's like, okay, that sounds fine. Well, she met me on the day we were supposed to meet. We got a little bit later of a start, um, and she couldn't keep up, even for the 12 miles that I had initially hoped for, which was crushing for me because I wanted another person I could talk to. <laughs> but she had to turn around, um, so I ended up finishing the trail by myself, which was fine. Uh, but she met me on this last day when I turned the corner and they came up as well. Um, my mom, my brother, and my aunt, which was uh, great to see them at the end of this. Um, that night, actually, that I was, the night before I was supposed to meet my aunt, this was the only time, one of two times, that I was spooked on the trail. Uh, I got to the shelter. Most of the people that I met were super nice, kind, just Hikers. Hikers are cool people. And um, I got to the shelter. It was really late. It, this was the latest by far I'd gotten to any shelter. It was getting dark. I could barely see. I still hadn't eaten, and I was really hungry. And I remember this guy, a uh, larger southern gentleman, uh, who was completely bald, was lying in the sleeping bag, and he scared the crap out of me. Um, just this, you know, spooky guy. And um, eventually I talked to him, and... He was a really cool guy. He'd hiked the Appalachian Trail, and he'd come back a year later to do, finish the Long Trail, which I, uh, I was told by um, different people that uh, that's what Appalachian hikers do, is they like the Long Trail section of the Appalachian so much that they come back to finish the Long Trail. Um, so he turned out to be a really nice guy. He owned a hostel down in one of the southern states on the Appalachian Trail, so it was good. But that was the only time that somebody spooked me. Um, the only time, I suppose I should tell a story about being scared, because I won't lie, there were, um, it's, it's weird being by yourself in the woods, and the only other thing that scared me was the stupid grouse. Because, <laughs> let, let me tell you this story. So, you'll be walking along. The first time this happened, I was walking in the rain. It was getting dark, and I was very unhappy. Walking along, and it waits until it's about, you know, yeah. yay distance, and then <laughs> <laughs> And it's the scariest thing you'll ever hear. Because there's, there's no other noise. You hear the, you know, the little chickadee in the background, that's it. The rain's coming down, then <laughs> <laughs> um, I also did end up seeing two baby bears that same day, so I was already on edge from the stupid grouse. Um, it was raining, so I was also angry about that. And um, 
I heard a movement up ahead, and I looked, and I saw two baby bears run up the hill. The trail kind of snaked its way around the hill, or up the hill. And, um, no mama. Uh. Which was terrifying. <laughs> um, so I stood there for a few minutes, just like a dork, just banging sticks together. And, um, after about five minutes, uh, I had to keep going. So I kept going, and I think I walked under the tree that one of the bears was in. I don't know, because I didn't look up. But um, each shelter has a booklet, and, uh, or like a log that you can write in if you wish to. Um, and a lot of people had seen these baby bears and had commented about there being no mother. Um, so I wasn't alone on that, <laughs> which was nice to know. Um, oh, hey, this is the next, I think this is the next picture. Yeah, so that's, this is looking directly into Quebec. This is the one time you can cross the border and cross back and no one yells at you. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is the mountains right into Quebec, which was absolutely beautiful. Um, you can't really see it here. I guess it must go like behind these trees, but there's a swath of about 100 feet maybe um, where there's just no trees in either direction, which is the border. And it's very cool to see. Um, let's see, I think, yeah, that was the last picture. <laughs> Windswept wacko here. Um, yeah, I believe I have a handful more pictures. Um, ah, the takeaway. So I, when I was in eighth grade, I did a presentation on um, black holes in space stuff. And my mentor for the paper that I ended up writing on that uh, said that any good presentation, um, some people won't be listening, they might zone out, mm, that's fine. Um, he said, have three points that you want them to take away from your presentation. So if you ignore me the whole time, wake up now and here's the three <laughs> points. Um, or the things that I wish I had known. Hike with someone, just do it. Don't think you're brave. You're not. Hike with someone. Um, mind over matter. I have a story on that in a second. If you think you can do something, you can do it. And it's the cheesiest, most used cliche of them all. But take it from me, that's a true fact. If you think you can do something, you can. I ended up finishing the trail in 16 days at age 16, which was, still is, something that I like to brag about because that's fun. Um, also, immerse yourself in nature. As I got to earlier, this mindset, this animalistic mindset, which I cannot recommend anyone gets into, but being around nature definitely brings about um, a different state of mind. Uh, and I highly recommend that if you get the chance, you do attempt at least, just take a day hike. Right? Just get away from things. Leave your phone. Um, I ended up bringing mine because I wanted to have access in case um, something went wrong. Although that probably wouldn't have helped because there's so little cell service in Vermont. It's, I'd have to hike the mountain with a broken leg if anything happened. Um, the brief story about mind over matter. Um, the last day, I kept passing people who were recognizing me, which was really weird. Uh, my mother had posted different um, pictures as she came to visit me about my journey along the trail. Um, into the class of 2018 um, Long Trail Facebook page. And so people saw this, and then as they passed me, they'd be like, hey, Zach, I'd be like, hi. Um, and I say that as it's funny. There were a lot of people that recognized me. Um, one of which was this mother and daughter who were hiking from north to south. And um, she, I think, was 12. She had done a whole bunch of other hiking before um, in Acadia, similar to me. Um, they had done a few, um, a few day backpacking trips before, but nothing this long. And um, I remember the mother asked me, do you have any advice that you can give my daughter, being someone who's hiked it in 16 days? And I said, okay. Uh, and the first thing that popped into mind was this, just mind over matter. If she thinks that she can do it. She definitely can. It, you have to believe that you can do it in order to actually do it. Um, and I, yeah, there were plenty of times on the trail 
where I wished I hadn't started it, but I'm not the type of person that's just gonna stop something just because I don't like it. There's a massive benefit that I gained from this and I wouldn't have changed it. I say that now, if you had asked me halfway in, I would have said, please get me out. <laughs> but no, I'm glad I did it. Um, I think there's one more picture. This is, I believe this is all the shel these are all the shelters I stayed in. You can count, there should be 16. <laughs> 15, 15? I don't know, between 15 and 16. Um, 14. 14? Then I'm missing one. <laughs> well, I might be missing one, but these are the majority of the shelters in order. So first through all the rest. This was, again, this was the only one I did not stay in, but I stayed in all the rest. Um, these two should be flipped. This was the last one. This one was mildly scary, but I think that's, that's it. Yeah. That's all I got, folks. <laughs> If there are any questions, I am definitely happy to take questions. Uh, um, I think questions can be much more fun than me How much blabbering. Was your that I can give you a rough estimate because I did the old stand on the scale, step off the scale, put it on, stand on the scale. It shifted every time I did that. 30 to 35 pounds. And how, um, how much? How much? you weigh? I mean, proportionally, <laughs> what were you carrying? One, uh, when I got off the trail, I was 124. I'm regularly 130-ish. So you're carrying 25, more than 25% of your body mass yeah. extra. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And another thing, I, I wish I had sticks. Everyone hiked with sticks. Um, I thought I'd look old if I hiked with sticks. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up a walking stick the second day. And that stick came with me the entire trip, through the water, through everything else. Um, it even came with me after I got really f uh, mad at one point and I broke it. <laughs> then it was much shorter, but <laughs> still traveled with me. Yeah. Yes? Um, what is fast hiking? How does that differ from what did he teach you? Yeah, um, it's the mindset more than anything else. Uh, he was the one that said that if you think you can do it in 16, or if you want to do it in 16 days, then you totally can do it in 16 days. Um, it was more just, I had someone to hike with me that was saying, you can do it. And it was also someone who was um, much faster than I am, and I don't often hike with people who are faster than me. Uh, I normally am in the front, so, but, yeah. Does that answer your question, Kay? I think so. Yeah. It's just that motivation that you needed to What was it like meeting some of the AT people? Were they very different than the long trail hmm. people? Um, not always. Sometimes they were, but most of the time everyone's just hiking. Um, so I'd say that there, if you were hiking, you couldn't tell the difference between them. Even talking with them, not really. Um, one woman I met who was hiking the Appalachian Trail, she had gotten to this point in three months which is ridiculously fast, and her feet were 10 times worse than the pictures you saw. I've never seen so many blisters in one area. It was awful. Were the shelters crowded? Um, no, I, hmm. The first night was the only night that I saw so many people. The, I think the most people I saw in one shelter at once may have been 15. And I got there more often than not before everyone else. Um, there were a few times that I got there much later, as I said. But um, no, for the most part, I always had a place. And if you didn't, there were um, camping areas all around the shelters. So. Sorry, can I have another question? Uh, food, what did you bring for food? And the second question is when you would put your food in a bag, what, what did you do with oh. it? What was the etiquette with some of the other oh, people yeah. who did not like the fact that you left it in the shelter? You're playing from an interesting book. Starting with the food, um, I forgot to say what I had for dinner as well as snacks. Um, all my dinners were dehydrated bags of food. You just boiled water, 
you poured the water into the bag, you shook it around, and then you hoped it tasted good. More often than not, it did not. But um, I had a lot of snacks. Sometimes I had, um, if, I think this happened twice uh, with the refills, I had um, bell peppers, carrots, and uh, celery. That went away very quickly um, because you can just eat carrot after carrot after carrot. Um, but I also had trail mix, chocolate, apples, beef jerky was phenomenal, seaweed. Gummy worms and Skittles were great for getting to the top of a mountain and being like, bag of Skittles. Um, <laughs> the etiquette, it's interesting that you should, that's the equation. Um, almost all the shelters had hooks in the ceiling, which I had no idea what to do with. Um, I, the etiquette, I guess, what you're supposed to do is take your food bag, this was completely full. Take your food bag, and you're supposed to like bear proof it, tie it to a thing, flip it over a branch, tie the thing down. I did that twice, because I'm lazy. Um, I'll fix that later. But um, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what they tell you if you go to any of the Green Mountain panels that you're supposed to do. Um, I did it the first night, and then I did it when I was yelled at by one of the Appalachian Trail hikers, because she was like, they're bears. Um, most of the time, what I saw people do, uh, specifically the long trail hikers would do this. The Appalachian Trail hikers almost always flung it up over a branch because um, in the south there's not as many shelters. In fact, there's very few shelters on the Appalachian Trail um, versus the long trail. But um, So they'd almost always do that. Uh, the hooks are designed so you just tie it there and it's like supposed to be a mouse-proof thing. So they'll have like a tin can, kind of like a squirrel-proof thing. I don't know if it worked, maybe, but out of sheer laziness that's more often than not what I did. Um, because I'd get to shelters between, I think the earliest was 5.30 that I ever got to a shelter, uh, more often than not it was more like 6, 7, and then at the northern end it was closer to dark, so 8.30-ish. Um, but other than that one incident all the Appalachian Trail hikers were cool people. <laughs> Any other questions? Thanks again for coming, Zach. That's of course. Fantastic. And I'm sure that if anyone wants to see his gear too, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Zach. Of course.